Tool Behaviors and Modes. There are several features that are offered across all tools that can help you to draft fast and accurately. First off, most tools have a keyboard shortcut that is displayed in the tooltip as you hover over the tool with the pointer. Next, once the tool is selected, it is quite useful to either verify or select the desired mode in the toolbar. Mode selection can be done with the pointer or it can be controlled with the universal toolbar shortcut set. Most tool operations are executed with a series of clicks. You'll find instructions in the toolbar to the right of the mode buttons, prompting you what to do next. Each click of the cursor in Vectorworks means pressing the pointer button and releasing it. Once the desired tool has been selected and the mode has been chosen, move the cursor onto the drawing area and click, while interacting with the objects on the page until the tool operation is finished. Tool Types The number of clicks they require for execution can categorize many tools. The Rectangle tool is an example of two-click or line-based tool. Let's demonstrate the use of this tool. Click once on the Rectangle tool. Click once on the first button in the toolbar, Rectangle Mode, and then move the cursor into the drawing area. Click once, releasing the pointer button and move the cursor down and to the right. As you do this, you'll see several different interface features. The dashed diagonal line indicates the rectangle's length and width. The floating data bar shows the height and the width, labeled X on Mac or Delta X on Windows. Ask for the width and Y on Mac or Delta Y on Windows for the height. A negative value indicates the downward direction for the Y axis and a leftward location for the x-axis. Several common features as available as you work with the tools in Vectorworks. At any time during the operation, no matter how many steps you've taken so far, you can press the escape key to cancel the operation. This action, however, is not undoable because the object has not yet been formed. So, Vectorworks makes a distinction between objects that are existing, which you can delete, and objects that haven't been fully formed, which you can escape but can't undo if you decide to continue. Floating Data Bar Another useful feature is the blue box called the Floating Data Bar that follows the cursor as you work on the screen. It's the blue outline that has data functions which are relevant to the operation. In the case of the rectangle, you'll see an X, and Y, which both give values of the horizontal and vertical direction at any time. You can type the number on the keyboard from the row of numbers across the top of the keyboard to begin editing the first value, which in this case would be the X value, so just pressing 5 key begins entering information into the X field. Any number across the top of the keyboard can be used to enter the data. However, the numeric keypad will not work with the floating data bar as these numbers are designated as shortcuts for displaying the standard views. Once the first field is filled out, pressing the tab key on the keyboard will move the cursor to the next field where you can assign values as well. This is an extremely intuitive and useful method to accurately enter precise values as you draw. Once the value has been entered, you can end by pressing the Enter key or by clicking the pointer once and releasing it to finish the drawing operation. After the second click has been completed, the object now exists in a selected state on the drawing and its information is displayed in the Object Info palette. Location and Rotation Type An example of this type of tool is the Column tool found in the Building Shell toolset. There are two clicks with this tool as well, once it has been selected. Click once on the tool and once in the first button in the toolbar, standard insertion mode. Bring the cursor into the drawing area and you'll see a small cross-shaped figure in dashed lines. Click once to set the location, then make a small circle with the cursor around your first click point and you'll see the dashed figure rotating with the pointer. When the figure is rotated as desired, click a second time to set the rotation. 
Most of the objects of this type represent a real-world object, and the first time the tool such as this is used on a particular project, the Object Properties dialog box appears after the first insertion. You can fill out the values here to define the default sizes of the column for subsequent uses. If you're following along, just click the OK button in the Projects Properties dialog box to see the finished column. The column is inserted at the specified location and rotation and is left selected. The properties of the column are displayed in the Object Info palette. As you move the cursor away from the new column, you'll see the dashed outline of another potential column following the cursor and you're ready to begin the location and rotation sequence once again. Single click tools. We'll go over two other types of tool behaviors before moving on. There's a single point tool behavior exemplified by the 2D locus tool from the basic tool palette. The tools icon looks like a small X in the second row. There are no modes for this tool, so there are no buttons in the toolbar. Since this tool is a single click tool, each time you click with the pointer produces a new locus in the drawing. Multi-step tools. The final kind of tool behavior that we'll demonstrate before moving on is the multi-step tool. This type takes an arbitrary number of clicks determined by your needs of the moment. The polygon tool possesses this type of behavior, so we'll select it from the basic tool palette. Click once on the tool, click once on the first button in the toolbar that creates polygons from vertices, and bring the cursor into the drawing. Click once to start and move the mouse away from the start point to see a vertex line segment forming. Each click as you move the cursor away from the point produces another line segment which can be ended by clicking once on the start point or double clicking in white space. We will encounter many opportunities to use these tool behaviors in the exercise. Feel free to take a moment for a bit of practice with a simple point, line, and multi-step tool examples that will help you incorporate speed, accuracy, and documentation techniques. Feel free to browse through the exercise file or skip ahead to the project. You can always come back to something that you've missed.